Good morning. It's good to be with you today, and I'm just so thankful, truly thankful to be in the presence of God, worshiping with you. Uh, this has just been uh, like a foretaste of glory divine, a foretaste of heaven. This is what it's going to be like. We're going to be all together. We're going to be worshiping the lamb who died and rose again, and we're going to be all together. Did I mention we're going to be all together? <laughs> Because this is what brings our hearts joy. As long as we can uh, be focused on Jesus Christ, well, guess what? We all get along. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, today, we have a most amazing truth. From God's word and I'm just really thankful that we can come together to just maybe allow me to express my love for Jesus Christ um, you know I think my wife might be getting a little weary of me coming here and saying look what I found this is amazing look what we have in Jesus so I get to do that to you now today <laughs> so I'm really really thankful for that um, isn't it amazing that Wesley said 18 months ago he wouldn't have stepped foot in a church? Would you look at what God can do? Yes. The power of the gospel. It, 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 just, it just should amaze us. Uh, it can break a hard heart. It can heal a wounded heart. Um, it, it can give strength to the weary. Uh, it is the most powerful message on this earth. And, and I'm just so thankful for my brother Wesley. He told me this morning, hey, did you know I'm brown? <laughs> and I'm like, since when? <laughs> because we don't see. We literally don't see color we don't see race we don't see anything but someone whom god loves Amen. and gave himself for Amen. and uh so i'm just so thankful to be with you guys today i, I look forward every single week to this one hour or whatever long we have so a very powerful truth from god's word today and i hope it comes across to you as man does he ever love me because that's how it came across to me so one time there was a servant who was outside of a palace and the king dressed like a servant and went out to that servant and brought him into the palace where he had set up a, uh, a group of people who crowned him king, the servant. Do you know that's what God has done with you and me and with every believer? Amen. And it ought to make us go, wait a minute. You got me confused with somebody who matters. But no, he means it, you. And I want to share this with you today. And I can't wait. I know. Get on with it. So Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 8, 5 through 7, actually, about kingdom living. And that was called the Sermon on the Mount, right? Now he's showing kingdom authority. Uh, as he goes around and heals and basically undoes everything that the devil did. That's right, yeah. He's showing kingdom authority. Now, why is this relevant to you and me today? We have problems. Some of us are hurting badly. Um, we have difficulties in our lives. Why does kingdom authority matter to you and me? And that is because of this. Many people live defeated lives where their circumstances are over them, where they're mastered by their problems, their circumstances. They can't seem to get out from under them. They're dominated by them. And I was this way for many years in my life, completely overwhelmed and undone by the circumstances of life. But this does not need to be, okay? Because if we discover this amazing truth of kingdom authority, we begin to see who we are right. and what we can do in Christ. 
And so how would you like to be on top of your circumstances? Okay, reigning over them, living by faith through them. This is called having kingdom authority. Now, the key verse for us today is Matthew 8, verse 9. There's a centurion, and you know the centurion, that means he has a hundred soldiers under him. Century, centurion, a hundred soldiers. And he comes to Jesus and he tells him this statement, for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. So he's in the middle. He's under authority and he has soldiers under him. Right? He says, I tell one to go, and he goes, and another to come, and he comes. I tell my servant to do something, and he does it. That's authority. Look, if you go back to the beginning of time, you will see that God created Adam and Eve, our first parents, and gave them authority. God told them to, what, subdue the earth, to rule and to reign over it. They were actually the king and the queen of creation, of the earth. But they disobeyed God. They surrendered to Satan. And so they lost their authority. In essence, they lost the crown. They gave up the crown. And they became slaves of Satan, no longer reigning, but instead under it all and following the prince of the power of the air. And do you know this? The son of a slave is a slave too. And you and I are all sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. That's how we're born into this world, born slaves under our circumstances. <laughs> until Jesus. But that's why Jesus came, right? He came to undo what the first Adam did. He's called the last Adam. And through his death for our sins and his resurrection from the dead, he won back for us what the first Adam lost. Right. Grasp this. Get this. Did you know that Jesus' death happened to be on the year of Jubilee. Okay, it came around every 50 years. So it was basically a once in a lifetime event. And Jesus' death happened to be in the year of Jubilee. Well, why does that matter? Because in the year of Jubilee, slaves were set free right. and all debt was paid off yeah. and they got to go free and no longer be slaves. And Jesus' death happened in the year of Jubilee, what does that tell us? The cross is the great emancipation proclamation to you, <laughs> right? You're free and God gives you grace now to reign in life. Now think about that. Look at Romans 5, 17. It says this, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man. Who was that one man? That was Adam. And who reigned in his place? Death. Death reigned because Adam sinned. But then, look at this. How much more? How much more will those who receive an abundance of grace, that's you and me, and of the gift of righteousness. I just want to stop for a minute. Righteousness is a gift. It isn't earned. It's not deserved. You don't work for it. It's a gift given to you, purchased at the extremely high cost of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. You get a lot of grace and you get the gift of righteousness. What does that result in? You get to reign where in heaven? No. no, in life. Do you see those words? Reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. It says reign in life. Do you get that? It's not in the, the great by and by. You know, it's in the nasty now and now. <laughs> right now. 
kings and queens. What does this mean? This is what we're going to talk about. So Jesus died and rose again. And you know what he did? He knocked death off the throne and he put the crown back on you. Right? That's what Jesus did. So you are now a king and a queen. We should just call each other your majesty, I think. Don't you think? I'm going to start doing that. So today we're talking about kingdom authority, and we're going to see three points today about kingdom authority. The first one is the source of kingdom authority. The second one, my favorite, is the secret of kingdom authority. And the third one is the strength of kingdom authority. Pray with me, will you? Our Father in heaven, you have given us much grace to call a servant a king, to call a nobody a somebody. God, how is it that you have been so gracious to us? From the council of eternity, you, the Son, and the Spirit made a plan whereby you could go rescue the slaves. And you could go make them kings and queens. I don't know what to say, except thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. First, the source of kingdom authority. So all authority comes from a higher authority. It comes down from above. So in Matthew 8, verse 9, the centurion says, I myself am a man under authority. Okay, so he was under the Roman emperor. He was under Caesar. Authority comes from above. All right, so here's an example. There's a disturbance at some house and a police officer knocks on the door and says, you know, like this is officer story with the Long Beach Police Department. Open up. Right. He has just brought in his higher authority, hasn't he? He never knocks and says, hi, it's Chris. Open up. <laughs> never. Right? He brings his higher authority with him. He's a policeman and he's been commissioned. And behind his badge is the entire police department of Long Beach. And beyond that, the National Guard and then the forces of the United States of America. This one man is backed up by incredible authority. And he is personally united with that authority. He is the authority. And the reason God's children have kingdom authority is because we are united with Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's, right. That's why we have authority. When Jesus died for you, do you know what else happened? You died in him. Amen. That's very important to understand. Not only did he die for you, you died with him. That means your old self, your old rotten, sinful self died with him. Hallelujah. May he rest in pieces. <laughs> you died with him. Do you know that? That's what the scriptures say. And when he rose, what did you do? You rose with him. Romans 6 verse 5 says, For if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. Amen. And look at this next one. And God raised us up. Yes. Us up with Christ seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Where are you seated? In heavenly realms. Okay, you, you think you might be in a, in a theater? You are in, by faith, you are actually in the heavenly realms. You're in Christ. You're above it all. Woo! This is good news for us who have been below it all for the longest time. <laughs> By faith, you are above principalities and powers of this dark world, and you are above your circumstances. Right. That's important to know. Answer these questions with me today. Does Jesus have power over Satan? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is Jesus above your circumstances? Yes. Are you in Jesus? Yes. You see, that's the point. 
we're united with Jesus. And the Bible says, as he is in this world, so are we. 1 John 4, 17. Look, that doesn't mean that we're so important, that we're somebody. It is all about my Jesus. Right? Last week I read about this man. It seemed like he was like bragging, you know, that he used a pocket knife, his pocket knife, to cut off the tail of a large lion. And, and, and somebody said to him, man, you're brave. You cut off the tail? He says, well, while you were at it, why didn't you just cut off his head too? And he said, oh, somebody had already done that. <laughs> See, on the cross, Jesus cut off the lion's head, right. right? And now you share in his victory because you're in him. 1 Peter 3.22 speaks about Jesus, but put your name in this verse because you're in him. He has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him, to him, to her. To them. Do you see? You're in him. The thing is this, that he gives us power of attorney, as it were, so that all things are subject to us. So that's the source of kingdom authority. It comes from us being united with Christ, who is over all. All right, now, the secret of kingdom authority. Okay, look at verse 9. For I myself... Am a man under authority with soldiers under me? Here's the secret. It's very plain, but it's very wonderful. All right. You cannot be over until you are under. That's what this is teaching us. You cannot have authority over your circumstances until you get under God's authority. All right, so it's simple, but it's wonderful. All spiritual authority in our lives comes from our submission to God, putting ourselves under him, submitting, surrendering to him. When you come under his authority, he puts you over your circumstances. This is what I'm running to Jody last week saying, no, wait, really? It, no, look, what it, because it's, look what it does for us. I hate it when I can't find words. <laughs> but you have to admit, don't you, that it's hard to submit to God. Amen. Romans 8 will tell you it's impossible to do. Apart from the work of the Spirit of God in you, we can't submit. The world teaches us to rebel. Our own hearts are rebellious by nature, and the message of the world comes in, and we, we end up like Frank Sinatra. I did it, what? My way. My way. Or Burger King, have it no your way, right? Or with that famous phrase, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> this is who we are by nature, right? We can't humble ourselves and submit. But if you can't submit to God and to the spiritual authority over you, you will have no spiritual authority and you will always be under your circumstances. You see, it's like when you ask someone, you know, hey, how you doing, you know, today? And they go, oh, pretty good under the circumstances. And, and you just want to say, what are you doing under the circumstances? <laughs> Jesus died and rose again so that you can reign as a king and a queen, your majesty. <laughs> this is how Jesus can say in Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Why can he say that? It's because look at him a few days earlier where he's facing the horror of the cross he compares it to drinking a cup of God's anger, God's wrath against sin. It's poisonous. It's going to kill him. And in his humanity, he's shrinking back from it. And he pleads with his father, if it's possible, please let, take this cup from me. He pleads three times, please take this cup from me. Please take this cup from me. Please take this cup from me. He's pleading with his father. 
and all of heaven is quiet and the angels are watching to find out what's going to happen to humanity because it's either you drink the poisonous cup and die forever or Jesus does. And what does he say? Finally, those words come, yet not my will, but yours be done. He submits to the will of God. He goes to the cross and he saves the world from eternal death. So God raised him up and gave him all authority in heaven and on earth, made him the king of kings, the Lord of lords, at the, at the name of which you and I and every knee on earth will bow in humble submission. Right. We're going to submit one time. It's going to be either here and now or there and then. And Jesus is Lord and he's king and he has all authority and, and he's above all and you're in him. And all it takes, the secret, is just submit. Just submit means to put yourself under, come under his authority. Jesus could say this, I'm over because I went under, you see, because he submitted to the cross out of love for you. He was given the crown because God loved him. See, and that's the pathway. It's always the cross that leads to the crown. That's the secret of kingdom authority. I don't know about you. Maybe today you're under your circumstances. You know, a little under the weather, right? You're under it all. You know what? Just put up the white flag of surrender. Amen. Just submit like you saw Jesus do. Come under him. If everything seems to dominate you, what you need is to surrender to God and to give your life to him. And he will raise you up and put you over your circumstances. Submit, surrender, and you'll begin to reign. Okay, Job twenty two twenty one. submit to God and be at peace with him in this way. See that? In this way, prosperity will come to you. Which is another way of saying, if you submit to God, you will reign in life. Amen. See, we have to be under to be over. That's the secret of kingdom authority. Now the strength of kingdom authority. The centurion told Jesus of his sick servant, and Jesus said, oh, I'll go and heal him. By the way, isn't this amazing that, you know, the centurion wasn't even asking for Jesus to come. Jesus is programmed to go. Oh, oh you, got, you got a need? I'm there. Right? You have a problem? I'm there. You're hurting today? I'm there for you. you are you struggling? Do you, do you have a loss in your life? I'm there for you. I'm near to the brokenhearted, and I save those who are crushed in spirit. Do you see how he's just, just like that? Someone says, my servant's sick. I'm there. I love that about Jesus. So he said he was sick, and then the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And what did Jesus say about that in verse 10? When Jesus heard this, he marveled. Do you know it's possible for you to make Jesus marvel at your faith? He marveled and said to those following him, Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. And he healed the servant like that. What is the strength of kingdom authority? It's two things, humility and faith. Humility and faith. When the centurion said, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, he was showing this. True humility? Get this. It's recognizing the greatness of Jesus. That's true humility. It's not putting yourself down or up. That can be disguised as pride. True humility is exalting Jesus and showing his greatness. You know, you were called out of darkness into light to declare the praises of him, right? To declare his praise, to exalt him. Who called you out of darkness and into light? Like John the Baptist who said, I'm not worthy to tie his shoes. You see, if you honor Jesus as Lord, if you submit to him as king of your life, 
That's true humility, and humility is kingdom strength because it's opposite the world. The world, I think I'm somebody, and I step over people to get higher. In the church, you know what's prized most of all? Humility. Have this same mind in you that was in Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God didn't grasp it, but made himself nothing and became like a servant and went to the cross and died. Humility. You know what? Humility never looks at someone else and puts them down. It looks at Jesus and lifts him up. That's humility. And when the centurion said, but just say the word. Now, I love this. And my servant will be healed. That's faith in Jesus' word. The centurion believed Jesus could heal with his word. He didn't even need to come. He could heal with his word. Guess what? Jesus can do the same today and heal you with his word. That's why we study the word of God, because that's what he uses to heal. And he can do it at a distance sends forth his word, and we're healed. He believed in the power of the word. I wish I'd brought, I have my electronic Bible, but I don't have my real Bible. Does anybody have a real Bible, a printed version you could just hold up? Look at this. This is the word, and this is the power of the kingdom. Right there, the word of God. This centurion had faith in the word of God, in the, and he believed that Jesus could speak Healing could communicate healing, belief in the word. Look how, <clears throat> look how faith and the word are always like this, always united. So in John 20, verse 31, John writes, but these are written. What, what are the these that are written? The these that are written are the book of John that he was writing. It could be extended to every book. In the Bible. But these books of the Bible were written that you may believe. See? The word and faith. See? That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life in his name. Ephesians 1.13. In him you also trusted. Guess what? This is the same word as faith or believing. Pisteo. Okay? In him you trusted. When? After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Do you see how the gospel gives faith? See, to believe. The word and faith are always together. And then we know Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is critical that we hear that we hear the word of God. Do you know what? When I'm up here talking, I'm up here listening because I know it's important to hear the word of God. And so that's what we do as we gather together. Look at the end of this story in Matthew 8, verse 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, as you have believed, so it will be done for you. And his servant was healed at that very hour. Jesus connects faith with answered prayer. Faith with answered prayer. So does James in chapter 5, verse 15, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Faith in God's word is the strength of kingdom authority. You know what? I know how much faith you have, and you know how much faith I have by how much of the word we have because they are connected together. Again, if you want to hear strength of kingdom authority, come join us in the boiler room. Uh, prayer time, 9.15 every Sunday, and you hear people praying God's word. It's just coming out like this. That's the strength of kingdom authority. I want to close today with an Old Testament parallel to this sick person in Matthew 8. Read this here with me in Psalm 107, starting in verse 17, and just sort of notice the parallels. Some were fools. They rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food, and they were knocking on death's door. Lord, help they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his what? 
He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. You and I are supposed to praise God for his great love and sending forth his word to heal us. But what I want to tell you is this. He heals us by his word. The sick person in Matthew 8 and the sick person in Psalm 107 is prophetic. Okay, what do I mean by that? 2,000 years ago, God looked out over a world of sick people, a world of sin, a world of people under their circumstances, and death was reigning over them, and God's heart broke And so he sent out his word. Jesus Christ is the living word. And Jesus went to the cross. And by his stripes, we are healed. And he rescued us from death by dying in our place. And all who believe that message reign in life. Live above your circumstances. Are above death and you live forever. God invites you today to surrender to him, to submit to him so that he can raise you up and give you authority to reign in your life above your circumstances. And you can surrender today. You can just say, I give up. Lord, here's my life. Take me and use me. Do what you will with me. I did this 24 years ago. I thought he'd throw me away. I thought he'd put me on the trash heap of humanity. Anybody who surrenders to him, he just takes, raises them up and uses them. Praise him. If you have any questions, we're here for you. If somebody has brought you today, talk with them, talk with one of the elders. We'd love to interact more with you on this. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we are those people who have struggled so badly. We have been under our circumstances, under death, uh, under all of the troubles of life. But you have come to us in love. You've come in grace and you have raised us up to be kings and queens. We can hardly take it in. Your grace has been amazing to us. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you. Lord, because you have stooped so low to raise us so high. And we just rejoice in that. Lord, I pray just now if there are those here in this church that need a special touch from you, God, by your grace and through your word, heal them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming.